So this is my 2018 Diamondback Release 4C. At the time in 2018, I paid $2,700 for it. This bike now retails for $4,350 on Diamondback's site. So I decided to make a three-year follow-up on whether these bikes hold up. <laughs> and I have about, I'd say around 2,000 miles on it. And, you know, I've done regular service on them. Most of the bike is still original. Some of the parts that aren't is because I just replaced them as an upgrade, uh, specifically the wheels and the drivetrain. So originally this came with the Diamondback Blanchard wheels, which I still have. They actually are working fine. I still have them. They are my backup set. I did go with Bontrager Line Elite 30s, which are lighter and they have a much better hub. Originally the bike came with SLX drivetrain 11 speed and I went to Shimano XT and mainly just because I have, was building another bike, used the SLX for that one and great time to upgrade this one to an XT. The crank set is original. You can see a little bit of the wear there and it's uh, the race face effect. The tires I also changed. This originally, this bike originally came with Minion DHF and DHRs. So, you know, you start thinking about it. This bike originally came with a Fox 34, a Shimano Dior brakes, disc brakes, uh, hydraulic, Fox rear shock, race face cranks, diamondback pedals, which I still use. I had clipless for a while, so that's why these are still pretty good. It had a KS Lev dropper post, WTB saddle. Most of those components are still the same in today's bike. It just costs a lot more. It has a diamondback stem and handlebar. And it has 150 millimeter travel in the front, 130 millimeter travel in the rear. So updates for 2021's bike is the drivetrain is now in NX 12 speed. I don't even know if that's even an upgrade for, from the SLX 11 speed that originally came on the bike since that was honestly a great shifting group very reliable and the nx reputation is not all that great it also now sports a fox 36 instead of a 34 their rear shock remains the float dps evo so the same rear shock and i think just about everything is still the same so as far as value on my bike i think if diamondbacks sold the newer version for around 3500 dollars maybe or less it would be a great buy. This for $2,700, I mean, that was an excellent buy. And I think that was at the time Diamondback's recipe for having a very, very successful bike. It sold out pretty quick. Now, Diamondback still gets a lot of hate in some places. The reason I made this video was because I saw on Instagram some Pinterest posts where they're kind of hating on diamondbacks but mine came out very 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 reliable these carbon frames they're all made overseas specifically most of them are made in china so little things yeah here a higher end frame will have a nicer grommet going into the frame where this is just a little rubber grommet grommet that slips right in there on the other side it doesn't even have one it's just a hole Whereas higher end frames will have a nice, a nicer setup. I did end up also, I'm sorry, re, uh, replacing the dropper just because the KS Lev after two years developed some play. So with regular maintenance on the fork and the rear suspension, this bike functions great. As you can see, for a three-year-old 2000 mile bike, it looks great, but main, maintenance on any bike is key. The frame has held up very well. There's really not a whole lot of chips on it. Initially, when I got the bike, the suspension used to creak a lot. I think it just, you know, after a few months, it just settled in. And just same thing, regular maintenance. I'll take it apart and grease it every once in a while, and it has worked perfect. I still ride, you know, still my main bike, and I still ride it regularly. And I don't see any need right now to buy a newer bike. 
So some people also complain that the suspension is an outdated design. Just because it's an old design, it doesn't mean it's a bad design. And another thing people were saying on the Instagram post was, you know, kind of like, well, these bikes became more popular because Seth and Porter used them. But I actually got this one, I think, before Seth actually was sponsored by Diamondback. Uh, back in the 80s, I rode BMX and I had a Diamondback Senior Pro. Loved that bike, wish I still had it. And I recently bought and restored a Diamondback Viper. So, you know, Diamondback has a little place in my heart. And honestly, I think they're still decent bikes. They're definitely not top shelf. The components on these bike, on this bike uh, are, are great though. Uh, it's just that for $4,300 today's price, I would not buy one. $2,700 for this one, amazing deal. And I think that's where Diamondback kind of is missing the boat. And you know, it, it's, I honestly wouldn't buy one at today's prices and what they're charging for it. Cause a lot of their bikes do have outdated geometry or outdated specs and they're still kind of trying to sell them at a premium. So let me know what you think. If you had experiences with these bikes, if you like them, if you don't like them. But like I said, I think at the time when I bought this one in 2018, it was a great value. The release one, which was the aluminum version with a um, rock shocks uh, suspension, that bike sold at that time for about $1,800, $1,700, an amazing deal. Full suspension, just in aluminum. So yeah, give it a th thumbs up, or if you have any questions about the bike, how it still rides, uh, I'm gonna put a link to my maintenance videos where I show how to service the shock, uh, the front and rear. If you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. Thanks for watching. See you next time.